welcome to lecture 2 so in this lecture let's start with the next concept halogenation so what is halogenation basically adding two halogens to the adjacent carbons of the alkene so it is only practical with chlorine and bromine because it is too poor with iodine and it is too violent with fluorine so there is a reasonable reaction with either bromine or chlorine now halogenation is regioselective it means that it undergoes anti addition reaction the reason it is anti so anti addition means that so one on the top and one on the bottom so this is how the addition occurs and you get end up getting two different isomers from the structure now when you take bromine bromine is a non polar structure but it's also polarizable when there is a nucleophile that approaches the structure when the nucleophile approaches the structure the positive charge tries to accumulate towards one side and the negative charge accumulates on the other side this here is the nucleophile here is the alkene itself so the alkene as it approaches the bromine here it creates a net positive charge and the other bromine gets a net negative charge resulting in the transfer of electrons to the other bromine resulting in the formation of the carbocation and the carbocation then gets attacked by the nucleophile resulting in the formation of the final product now if this attacks on the same side it would be syn addition but it would not attack that side because there is a bromine on that side so the reaction will be much more towards the other side rather than the bromine side so that's the reason why it undergoes anti addition rather than syn addition so the formation of a bromonium ion intermediate is generally consistent with anti addition so bromonium ion is where the bromine attaches itself to both the carbons resulting in the formation of the bromonium ion so where the two processes involved are loss of nucleophilic attack and the loss of a leaving group now the bromine here attacks back side to the bromonium ion resulting in the formation of the anti addition product is a resulting in the anti addition product now halogenation is also stereo specific and the stereochemistry of the starting alkene determines the stereochemistry of the product now if the product is cis you end up with two different isomers if it is trans you end up with a meso compound so remember that trans structures result in meso compounds and cis structures result in two different stereo isomers so that is halogenation next let's talk about halohydrin formation so what is a halohydrin formation you have a halogen and a hydroxyl group so x and oh so here let's take hal halohydrins here it forms when halogenation is conducted in water so it's the exact same reaction but the halogenation here occurs in presence of water so the water here acts as the nucleophile and attacks the bromonium ion the same thing happens here it forms the bromonium ion but the bromonium ion at, uh, is getting attacked by the water molecule the water molecule then creates an intermediate structure and results in the losing of a proton so as the proton leaves the structure after proton transfer it results in the formation of an addition of a bromine and an oh group so there are many more h2o molecules compared to br minus molecules so that's why h2o out competes the brom bromine for the bromonium ion and results in halohydrin formation rather than halogenation of the both the carbons now after water attacks it is then deprotonated to yield the bromohydrin product so notice that here it undergoes a proton transfer in the second part results in the removal of that proton results in the formation of the structure so here this is a bromohydrin and if it is chlorine we call it chlorohydrin now the halohydrin formation is regioselective so the halogen will always go towards the less substituted carbon and the oh group will always go towards the more substituted carbon so remember that there is no hydrogen here so we will have to compare between oh and bromine oh is much more powerful that's why oh goes towards the more substituted carbon and bromine goes towards the less substituted carbon so the regio selectivity is because of the fact that h2o attacks the more substituted carbon and because the reason it attacks the more substituted carbon is because it does not like protons so where it goes to the place where there is less number of protons <coughs> next 
dihydroxylation. So dihydroxylation is adding two OH groups. So dihydroxylation, there are two types, anti and syn dihydroxylation. Anti dihydroxylation is OH on the same side, either on top or bottom. Syn dihydroxylation, anti dihydroxylation is on the opposite side. So I'm really sorry for that. Is anti dihydroxylation syn? is on the same side. So both of them lie on the same side either on the top or bottom. So this is the idea behind dihydroxylation. So for example what is dihydroxylation reaction? You attach two OH molecules to each end of the alkene molecule resulting in the formation of uh, uh, diols. So most common product that you end up with is a diol which is basically a dialcohol. Now anti dihydroxylation of an alkene is a two reaction process. First we use peroxy acid. Remember this principle that we are using always a peroxy acid. Peroxy acid creates an epoxide. The epoxide in the presence of an acid forms a transdiol. So this is the reaction for anti-dihydroxylation. So the epoxide formation is due to the presence of the due to the presence of the peroxy acid. The peroxy acid itself creates the epoxide. So what happens now is that one of the hyd peroxy acid is a structure that contains more than the extra hydrogen, so the extra oxygen. One of the oxygens it donates it to the molecule, to the alkene, resulting in a carboxylic acid formation and an epoxide. The epoxide under further hydrolysis results in the formation of the final diol. Here we use peroxy acid, so peroxy acid, the two of them that we use are peroxy acetic acid or PAA. The other one is metachloroperoxybenzoic acid or MCPBA. These are the two peroxy acids that we can use. So what happens here? The epoxide undergoes a proton transfer first, creates a oxonium ion. The oxonium ion gets attacked by the H2O molecule on the more substituted carbon resulting in the formation of a anti-dihydroxylation product, anti-addition product. So the similarities are the same. So protonated epoxide, bromonium and a mercunium, all of these reactions result in the same strain here. So the ring strain and the plus one charge make these structures really good electrophiles. That's the reason why they always yield anti products because the nucleophile must always attack from the side opposite to the leaving group. Next let's talk about syn dihydroxylation. Syn is on the same side. So OH groups. So you have two OH groups on the same side. So when you have on the same side, what is the common one that is used is we have to add OH and OH across the pi bond in a concerted and syn fashion. So the one that is used is osmium oxide, osmium tetroxide, OSO4. So the name is called osmium tetroxide. So the structure here initially the alkene attacks one of the proton, one of the oxygens and the oxygen, the double bond will attack one of the carbons and when both of them happen at the same time it creates a cyclic osmate ester and this ester under the presence of sulphate, sodium sulphate or sodium disulphate, bisulphate creates the syn product. So if you, the OSO4 is a really expensive and a toxic material because of the heavy metal osmium. So we can use NMO or an alkyl peroxide as a co-oxidant. The reason for a co-oxidant is because we can use less amounts of OSO4. So this is the idea behind the reaction. Now there are two ways. One you can use MNO or you can use a peroxy acetic acid, peroxy acid that also creates the same structure. Now you can also achieve syn dihydroxylation with potassium permanganate and mild conditions at cold temperatures. So the same thing happens here but here you cannot isolate the intermediate product and finally under oxidation reaction with in presence of NaOH results in the final formation of the syndiol. So you get a cis diol. So in, in the anti dihydroxylation you get a trans diol here you get a cis diol. Now the synthetic utility of manganese oxide so manganese oxide ion is limited 
because it reacts with many other functional groups as well. Next, let's talk about the next reaction, oxidative cleavage. So what is oxidative cleavage here is that the double bonds are also reactive towards oxidative cleavage. Oxidative cleavage is the reaction where oxygen splits the double bond and splits the structure into two different structures. So the one of the processes is ozonolysis. So what happens when you have an alkene in presence of ozone, the ozone splits this structure right across the double bond and adds oxygens to that carbons, to those two carbons. This here is an example of oxidative cleavage. So remember the cleavage represents breaking. So because this is we are adding oxygen. The reason we use ozone is because ozone exists as a resonance hybrid and it has two contributors. One has a positive charge and the other has a negative charge. It results in the easier formation of the final product. So first it creates an ozonide and the ozonide finally ends up becoming the monoozonide becomes the stable isonide and finally under a mild reducing agent finally creates the product. The mild reducing agent that we use here is DMS. It's also called dimethyl sulfide. So dimethyl sulfide is the structure that we end up using. Now the common reducing agents include dimethyl sulfide and zinc or H2O, zinc and H2O. Now here they are asking you to write, predict the bicyclic reactant used to create this reaction here. So first thing we know is that if they are, proxy, if they are in proximity, they are the ones that end up becoming the structure. Notice that this bond here and this bond were originally so you can combine these two carbons, so this carbon and this carbon here. So you can combine these two carbons here. And you also have these two carbons here, so this carbon and this carbon here. Now how do you know which structure to draw? Is that start from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So which means it's a 6 membered ring. So the originally that structure was so this structure and across one of the bonds you had a double bond so this is the double bond that was there so this is the double bond next we also need to know the other structure here so between here so one two three four and five so which means it's a five membered ring so the five membered ring creates starts from here So this is the structure and the double bond comes at the first carbon here, so between these two carbons. So the double bond actually exists between this carbon and this carbon. So the double bond will be right here. So this is the product, so this is the bicyclic reactant that produces under ozonolysis this product. And this is how you can predict the structure. You basically combine those two structures and form a cyclic structure. So this is the structure that you end up with and where you started from. Here you don't need to draw the double bond. The reason mainly is because bicyclic reactants themselves already have the bonds. So you are basically breaking those bonds. Next, let's talk about how to predict the products of addition reactions. Number one. Analyze the reagents that you are using to determine which groups will be added across the double bond. Second, determine the regioselectivity whether it is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. And third, determine the stereospecificity whether it is a syn addition or anti-addition. And in the determining the stereospecificity, each step can be achieved with a minor reagent memorization and a firm grasp of the mechanistic rationale. You don't need to remember the exact mechanism, you just need to know how it works with basic simple principles. So the more familiar you are with the mechanisms, the easier it will be to predict the products. So these are what we call one step synthesis reactions. We discussed three of them. One is addition, substitution and elimination. So addition involves taking an alkene and adding two groups to the carbon that contain the alkene. alkene. Substitution involves substitution of the functional group on, a part, on the alpha carbon. 
Elimination involves the removal of the functional group, so removal of the group on the carbon. So these are the three one-step processes. Now, so they have given us a reaction, so they are asking us to predict what are the reagents and conditions for the following process. First, we need to know what is happening in this reaction. Notice that these are the two carbons and there is an OH group on this carbon here and there is a, if there is nothing there, it means that there is a hydrogen there. So which means that this is a hydration reaction. They are adding hydrogen and OH. Notice that the OH is on the more substituted carbon and the hydrogen is on the less substituted carbon. So which means that this is a Markovnikov reaction. It's a Markovnikov addition. So the only Markovnikov addition that we can use here is acid catalyzed hydration. So what do we need for acid catalyzed hydration? We need H2SO4 and H2O. So these are the two things that you need for the reaction to occur. So this is your final product. So this is how you can predict the reaction here. Now there are also what we call multi-step syntheses. Multi-step synthesis involves changing of the position of the functional group. For example here this is a transformation where bromine is moving from this carbon here onto this carbon. So which means that this is this cannot be achieved directly. It involves a two-step synthesis. First we remove the bromine under elimination reaction, create an alkene and then add the bromine under addition reaction resulting in the final product formation. So the first way we can remove the product, so remember that we have to make sure that the double bond comes right here which means that there are two cases where we can do the elimination, one by using a simple and a strong uh, base which creates Zyze product and when we use a bulky base we can create a Hoffman product but we need this one so this is the step that we are going to go through. Now once we have the structure to create next we have to add the addition reaction it involves notice that this is the more substituted carbon and this is the less substituted carbon which means for this more substituted carbon it should be bromine on the less substituted carbon there should be hydrogen. So it involves Markovnikov addition of hydrogen and bromine so we know that the reaction directly occurs in presence of hydro hydrohalic acid HBr so that will create you the final synthesis notice that this is the overall reaction here it involves two re two separate steps here first is elimination the second is addition reaction so these are what we call multi-step synthesis processes so you can try this as well these two processes first you're eliminating the OH group and then I'm finally adding the hydrogen and OH group here this is the less substituted carbon and this is the more substituted carbon so which means that we are adding anti-Markovnikov addition. So the only way we can add anti-Markovnikov addition for hydro hydroboration and oxidation. So what happens here? It involves first we need BH3THF and second we need NaOH. So these are the two, two things that we need for this addition reaction here. But notice that here to eliminate it on OH, OH is not a good leaving group. So we cannot eliminate it. So it involves another process first changing the OH group into something else. First we change the OH group using tosylate sulfur, tosylate chloride and pyridin to change it to tosylate ion. The tosylate ion now makes it a good leaving group. And in presence of a bulky base, it ends up creating the final product, that the, uh, the reactant that we need. Finally, we can do the, from this product here, we know that we have to do anti-Markovnikov addition of hydrogen and OH, which involves hydroboration and oxidation, so which is BH3THF and H2O2 NaOH. So these are the concept, this is a concept of where we are trying to change the functional group from one position to the other position. The second is changing the position of the pi bond itself. How would you change the position of the pi bond? First, it involves the addition reaction where we remove the double bond by adding certain reactants. For example, here we can do anti-Markovnikov addition of a hydrogen and bromine and then eliminate it and create the Hoffman product. So to create a Hoffman product, we need to use a bulky base. So it becomes terbutyl potassium oxide and Addition reaction involves the addition of hydrogen and bromine in an anti-Markovnikov addition. So here we have to use a peroxy acid that creates the anti-Markovnikov addition. And if we use a bulky base, we can create the half one product.
so this is the second step where we are choosing the step where we have to change the position of the pi bond itself so these are the two multi step synthesis processes so in to in the entire lecture here we discussed hydrohalogenation which is Mar markovnikov in presence of hbr when you use a peroxy acid we have anti markovnikov we talked about acid catalyzed hydration where it becomes markovnikov addition of hydrogen and oh and you have oxymercuration and demercuration which is the hydro addition of hydrogen and oh in presence of without any carbocation rearrangements next you have hydroboration and oxidation which is anti markovnikov addition of h and oh you have hydrogenation which is the involvement of adding hydrogens to the structure you have bromination which is halogenation here halohydrins adding an oh group and a halogen group it involves an anti markovnikov addition here so where the bromine goes to the less substituted carbon and the oh grows to the uh, more substituted carbon you have anti dihydroxylation which we used with uh, in presence of uh, so we use anti dihydroxylation next we have syn dihydroxylation where we use osmium trioxide and you have ozonolysis which is basically oxidative cleavage so these are the 10 reactions that we have covered in this chapter so this is the summary of the entire reactions that we have covered so if you want to take a screenshot pause the video right here so that you have a summary of the entire reactions that we discussed in this lecture so with that we end our lecture on addition reactions of alkenes i'll see you again in the next lecture